So having covered sets, maps, and sequences, we've talked about kind of the three major branches of collections in the collection libraries in Scala. You might recall though that in the mutable kind of type hierarchy here, under sequence there was a uh, an element here that we haven't seen in either the the top level or in the immutable, and this is called buffer. And it's worth taking a minute just to to describe what buffers are, because in some ways buffers are the ultimate mutable sequence. So let's go ahead and let's pull up a Scala terminal and let's make some buffers. So just to make sure that we have it here, remember that if you're going to deal with things in mutable, you really should not you should not import everything from mutable because if you do that it hides the set and the map it hides the immutable versions behind the mutable versions and we really want to make it clear when we're doing things that are mutable now you could specifically just import the buffer itself but I will tend to go the approach of just importing this so I want to make two buffers here I'm going to make one called buff and it's going to be a mutable dot buffer of one, two, three, four, five. Okay. That syntax should look similar to what you remember seeing for arrays and lists. I just I'm calling the apply method on the companion object for buffer, and it gave me this subtype called an array buffer, which as you can probably guess from the name has something to do with arrays. Uh, the actual data is stored in an array inside that is wrapped inside of this class called uh, that has the buffer interface to it. It turns out that we can also do things like fill. So I can do mutable.buffer.fill and I'll make a collection that has 10 elements of random doubles. Let's make sure that's typed correctly. There we go. Okay, so we got 10 elements that are random. So we build them much like arrays and lists like an array this is mutable so I could take buff and I could say sub 3 equals 99 and then if I look at buff the 4 has been replaced by a 99 and of course we can index things our buff sub 0 is the first element here the point 0.745 so we can index and we can assign uh, it is mutable so we have the ability to alter it but we can go beyond that. We can do things that we really can't do with arrays because with arrays, when you create an array, that array has a fixed size and it doesn't change. You would have to make a new array. Buffers have methods on them like plus equals. And so plus equals allows you to add a new element into the buffer. And so I could say buff plus equals seven. And it turns out that the these methods give you back the buffer itself so they can be chained together so this appends 7 and 8 there is also a plus plus equals colon which will prepend so I can do buff sorry let's say negative uh, 10 plus equals colon buff remember that the things that end in colon are right associative instead of left associative so this is, and, and it reads out the way you kind of expect it, we're prepending the negative 10 onto the beginning of our buffer here. There is a plus plus equals, which takes collections. So that will add another three elements, and it's an, app, an append. There's also a plus plus equals colon that will prepend. And there's minus equals and minus minus equals. So I could say buff minus equals one. Note that that took out the first instance of one. We still have another instance down here. So it only takes out the first element and there's a minus minus equals which will take out all the elements that you give it. Uh, there, You can also use named methods. There's an append, there's an append all, there's a clear. So much like our mutable set had a clear and our mutable map has a clear. If I call clear, now all of my elements are are gone. I can also do an insert so let's go ahead and do buff plus plus equals one two three four five 
no nope, list of one, two, three, four, five. That needs to be a collection. Now I can do buff dot insert, and when you call insert, first you have to give it an index. So I'm going to do this at index two, and then it is a the type A, whatever it stores. In this case, it's ints star. So I'm going to do 90, 91, 92. And what that's going to do is it will insert 90, 91, 92 starting at index 2. So 0, 1, 2 for the indices. There's also a prepend method that will stick things you know, before uh, the, the buffer. It's much like the symbolic operator that's doing the uh, the a, a plus equal or sorry a plus equals colon or a plus plus equals colon except that it takes things with the variable argument list here which sometimes is helpful there's a remove uh, there's also a remove count where it takes out uh, one element but it you're giving it an index for for where to start removing things from um, and there are some trims so remember you would have so let's call it what buff is. We've seen methods like drop two, okay? But drop two creates a new buffer because it's something that works on all of the immutable collections. But if I do buff dot trim start of two, now when I look at buff, you'll see that it dropped off the first two elements. There's also a trim end that you can call to, uh, to take things off of, of the end. So there's a number of different methods that are part of the buffer. As always, you can go to the standard library, it's Scala Collection Mutable Buffer, and you can go through and look at the, the things that are in there um, to see you know, what different options you, you have. A lot of the ones that are doing mutation are part of the, the abstract values in here because they're kind of things that were added for, specifically for the buffer. But that kind of gives you an overview of buffers. You can basically use them any place you had been considering using an array or a list or a vector because fundamentally they are just sequences, but they're highly mutable sequences. And in that regard, we're going to see fairly shortly, you know, I know I've had many students who are like, oh, this is great. This is exactly what I wanted. It's basically a growing array. But there are lots of places in programming where being mutable is actually a disadvantage. It seems like it makes things easier on you in the short run, but when you start doing things like multi-threading or when your software gets larger and you're passing around these values, if I pass to some other code a mutable value, they can change it. And if I don't want them to be able to change it, I have to make a copy, which means A, I have to remember to make a copy, and B, I have to go through the overhead of making a copy. And so there are actually quite a few situations when you're really programming where you want to restrict yourself to things that are immutable, but it's good for the situations where mutable works well to know that things like the buffer exist.